Welcome to What is Bayesian Statistics? This is part of a Applied Bayesian Statistics course at Virginia Commonwealth University. And this is our first video and we're going to get ourselves rolling here. So, what is Bayesian Statistics? Well, first we have to go back and sort of think about what statistics is and some general frameworks. So, statistics can be viewed in three major categories, branches. There actually are more, but they're, they're more esoteric, so we're not going to talk about them. Uh, there's the frequentist, the fiducial, and the Bayesian. And like I mentioned, there's others, but they're not that common. All right, so the frequentist. This is probably the one that you're familiar with. It's what's taught in most undergraduate courses. It's what's in textbooks. It's what's in software. It's kind of like the most ubiquitous version of statistics out there. And here, the inference is based on the idea, if you could repeat the experiment a large number of times, then... Well, if we were interested in confidence intervals, then 95% of the intervals generated would capture the true value of theta. Okay, so you, if you could do this a thousand times and you calculated a 95% confidence interval, then uh, you would have in here that 950 of the thousand would actually have captured the true underlying value of theta. Now, that can be problematic in the sense that you usually only do your experiment once. Same thing for a p-value. The p-values show up in this and they say, well, you know, well, if we had this, the p-value would be so many percent of the data sets would exhibit a pattern as strong or stronger than the one observed in the data set. And that's what they're looking for, sort of the probability that would occur across repeated samplings. Now, the key idea here is the parameter theta, and that's the thing we're trying to make an inference about, are fixed values. Okay, So they don't change um, from data sets to data set or experiment to experiment. It is an underlying fixed value in the population. Uh, fiducial, fiducial, introvert, uh, fiducial inference is a method that is starting to gain some popularity. It fell out for a while, and there's some reasons for it falling out. But the idea was is they wanted to do something like Bayesian statistics, but they didn't like the idea of having to specify a prior probability distribution. And so if you don't do the distribution that they put in as a substitute for the prior just right, then you don't end up with a real probability distribution at the end, which is what it, the whole point of doing a Bayesian analysis is. Um, so they produce, uh, create intervals that were called fiducial intervals, and fiducial means faith in Latin. That, that's where the word comes from. So it's an interval that you could have faith in versus confidence in. Um, and it's very much designed to be like a Bayesian approach. And I'm going to put here the parameters theta are really not random nor fixed because there's not always a probability distribution that goes along with them in terms of like a Bayesian approach. Okay, so the Bayesian inference, uh, this really began to get popularity in the 1980s with the advent of cheap computing. Before that, everything was theoretical, it was very, very difficult to calculate, and computers made this super easy. And the idea is, is you have parameters, theta, that are random. They're not fixed from experiment to experiment. They are random underlying quantities in the population that are governed by a probability distribution. Uh, the nice thing is, is when we observe our data D, we can update our probability distribution of theta. And that's... You can do this repeatedly every time you get a new piece of data. So the method learns what's going on as you update it. And all the inferences are based on a updated probability distribution called a posterior distribution. And the thing here is, is notice how many times probability shows up on this slide, okay? So um, keep that in mind. It's very probability dense. Uh, most people consider the Bayesian approach rather straightforward as it prescribes the steps to be taken. It says do this, do this, do this, do this, and then do this, and it'll work for you. And that's all well and good, except sometimes it's hard to complete those steps. All right, so... Um, before we can really focus on a Bayesian approach, we really need to understand what statistics really is. I think um, whenever I teach a course that actually deals with sort of the philosophical ideas underlying statistics versus just computing, 
I like to back up and say, really, what is statistics? And that's what you'll see in the next couple videos is I'm just going to talk about what statistics is and then we can move forward so that we're all sort of on the same page because I find that a lot of people don't really know what it is um, and that they end up always being confused because of their underlying assumptions. So we're going to move through those in the next couple videos. So see you there.